What is up? How was your weekend? Hopefully it was better than that Manchester United vs Real Madrid Trash Masters display of a shootout. We've got things to talk about, man. Big things. So if you aren't a subscriber, you should become one and talk to me about these big things in the comments section. Maratta unveiled. Mendy completed. Danilo completed. City signing everyone. I mean, of course, Maratta went to Chelsea, but those last two. And like I said in my last video, City aren't being stubborn like some of these other teams. And when the selling club asks for, you know, an extra 5 million on top of their offer, they're giving it to them because they realize that in order to improve their squad, you gotta pay up. And if you do that, then you have a better chance at winning trophies. That's smart in my opinion, but it is super shocking looking at how much Pep Guardiola has spent since joining Manchester City. How much has he spent? Well, 395 million euros. That's like a Neymar and an Mbappe. Okay, so as I was editing this video, Marco reported that Real Madrid have reached an agreement in principle with Monaco for the transfer of Kylian Mbappe. How much is gonna ring them up? A cool 180 million euros. If this is true, that would absolutely destroy the former record transfer fee for Paul Pogba. Funny to think that it could be broken once again by the Neymar transfer, but anyway, this actually makes sense to me as Real Madrid seemed like the only team that Mbappe would leave for. Check it. Also, a loan back to Monaco could be on the cards, though Madrid do need some backup for Benzema now that Morata is gone. No doubt we definitely gotta keep an eye on this one. So, the Virgil van Dijk transfer saga took another turn this weekend as Pellegrino, the new manager of Southampton, told Virgil that he can sit in the corner alone if he doesn't want to play with his club, aka he can train alone. Now, it was also announced that he will not be part of the Southampton squad that will be traveling to France for a preseason training camp. Oh. Now, there's only two ways that this can end. Number one. He'll end up getting the move he wanted by signing on with Liverpool. Or a couple of months will go by and he will apologize solely as a formality so he can get back into the team and get some playing time. Even though Liverpool's transfer rumors have been dominated by their pursuit for Naby Keita, apparently they're still in for Van Dijk and will submit a bid if Southampton are willing to do business with them. Why the whole if they're willing? Well, I'm sure you remember that embarrassing week for Liverpool when they had to apologize to Southampton for tapping up Van Dijk. Which by the way, that tapping up thing is such a stupid thing to call a team on, as if it doesn't happen in every single transfer deal. That's like giving someone a ticket for jaywalking, you know? It's lame. Speaking of Kaita though, he had a bit of a temper tantrum in Leipzig training this weekend. After taking a hard tackle from Diego Dem, his teammates know he wants to leave, and it shows as nobody really checked if he was all good until much later. Then, Kaita tackles Dem, and everyone surrounds him slash squares up. Dem came away only with a bruised knee, thankfully, as they originally thought that he had tendon damage. But training for the afternoon after that incident was abandoned. So if Kaita's rotten enough, then he may get that move away that he's looking for. But then again, Leipzig seemed like they would be happy with having him just rotting away on the reserves. Also, RB Leipzig was happy to post this cringeworthy video. Werde schon gut behandelt. Alles okay. <laughs> 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 All good guys, nothing to see here. <laughs> that is the most wooden acting performance I've seen since the Twilight Saga. I was unconditionally and irrevocably in love with him. Speaking of rotten people, Gerard Piquet. He took to Instagram to try and convince people that Neymar is not leaving Barcelona for a world, world, world record fee. The picture Piquet posted, say that, 20 eight times fast, was of himself treating Neymar like Shakira with a caption that said, se queda, or he stays in English. Now, ESPN sources that are close to Neymar claim that there isn't any definitive truth to this post and that it confuses them a bit because Neymar still intends to leave Barcelona. They say that this is just another one of the many attempts that the Barcelona captains have made to encourage Neymar to stay with Barcelona. Though I am sure that the goals that he scored against Juventus in front of 82,000 people were sick. Based on everything I've read and trust me, I've read a lot on this story. I'm completely unsure as to whether he will stay with Barcelona or go, but right now, I'm at about 51% stay and 49% leave. But a dude who I am 100% sure should bounce from the Portuguese league is William Carvalho. It's time, man. 
get out. This guy is, in my opinion, and keep in mind I'm a Benfica fan, so you can trust this opinion on a sporting player, an excellent central midfielder that, given time, could be one of the best in the Premier League. For a big man, he has mm, decent speed, not the greatest. He's stronger than Lukaku times two, perhaps a bit of an overstatement, but he's got a great pass on him and last season won possession in the middle third of the pitch more than any other player in the Portuguese league. I mean, just look at what he did to AS Monaco in a preseason friendly the other day. So it's no wonder he's linked with more English teams this offseason, such as Arsenal, again, and Newcastle. Arsenal have apparently opened talks with Sporting to sign the big man, and if he goes, it'll probably be for about 40 million, as that seems to be the market standard in this offseason, and given the fact that central defensive midfielders are such a hot commodity. But in my opinion, it would be money well spent. I know for sure I would take this dude at Benfica any any minute. Speaking of Benfica and CDMs, the aforementioned club is on the verge of signing their next big export in the next few seasons, no doubt, when a bigger European club comes calling. In 20-year-old Estudiantes player Santiago Asasibarra. Yes, another Argentinian that, like I said, will probably end up selling in a few seasons' time. But what's different about him, which is rare from our Argentinian imports, is that he is not an attacking central midfielder or a winger. Wow. Now, this deal screams player flip to me, sort of like you'll buy a house, fix it up, and sell it for more. But it would be good to have some cover in case Faisa is injured again, because Samaris is hit or miss for me. He's not my favorite player. And Faisa is injured at least for 15 games a season. But for me, Benfica has more dire needs, like at the right back and goalkeeper positions. And one of those they've tried to rectify, as they've submitted a bid for Hoffenheim right back Kedera Beck. But a bid from Galatasaray has already been accepted, so that one's looking a little bit murky. Man, why is nobody talking about signing Moussa Dembele? No, not that Dembele, the other Dembele. Earlier in the season, when the transfer market was closed, he was linked with every club across Europe and all of their colonies. Now that it's open, crickets, my man. But apparently Marseille has been negotiating with Celtic for a price of around 20 million pounds for the young French striker. Which gets me thinking, that's great for Marseille, but huh? If he's available for only 20 million pounds, why aren't any of the other big clubs across Europe wanting to sign this kid anymore. He scored 32 goals last season. Yeah, it's the Scottish Premiership, but that's a decent return from a young, very promising striker. I remember when Milan approached Celtic for Dembele, they were told to cough up 40 million for him. So 20 million seems way too low. I don't know if this is bad reporting or just all of Europe falling asleep on this kid and Marseille capitalizing on it. So right now we'll put this one on the whack rumors shelf, but we'll keep an eye on it because I'd love to see him playing in a more challenging league. No offense to the Scottish Premiership, of course. You know how people were saying that Neymar would pay his own release clause in order to get a move to PSG? Well, in reality, it was the PSG owners were going to give him the money to pay his own release clause, thus ensuring he would make the move to PSG. Well, anyways, a player actually has paid their own release clause in order to get that move from one team to another. And who is that player? 21-year-old Pablo Fornals, Fornali, of Malaga, moving to Villarreal. That, from Villarreal's point of view, goes a long way, as if you know that a player is willing to shell out 12 million euros in order to join your club, then you know he's gonna be committed. By the way, Villarreal is building up a nice little squad and could do some damage in the league this year. You know, maybe a fourth place finish, that type of thing. As they brought in Ruben Semedo from Sporting, Fornals, of course, from Malaga, and Enes Unal from City. Interested to see how they do next season. And finally, as Leicester City claim that they are inching so, so close to securing a deal to bring Kalichi Iannaccio to their club, trusted Sky Sports journalist Gianluca Di Marzio, and yes, Sky's Italian sources are actually way better than their English ones, is claiming that Leicester are willing to open talks with AS Roma in order to bring Riyad Mahrez to Rome. Mahrez was also linked to Arsenal earlier in the transfer window, but Leicester City put a massive 50 million pound asking price on him. However, given that Roma isn't a direct rival or competitor of theirs, apparently they're willing to let Mahrez go for as little as, well, 40 million pounds. Roma's initial offer was 30 million plus bonuses, so there's a little bit of work to do there in order to come to an agreement, but with Monchi pulling the strings in the shadows, anything is possible. And if this deal does go through, that's a tasty little signing for Roma and could really change their squad. Plus seeing Mahrez play with more quality around him would be beautiful. All right, y'all, 
I'm off now. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Make sure you like the video and drop a comment so I can talk to you about what your club is doing in the transfer window. But other than that, enjoy your week and I will see you on Friday for what those who know, know. All right guys, peace out.